Right. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yes, so I'm Navin Manny, ENT consultant from Manchester School Infirmary. I'm just going to give a fairly brief talk, which is an introduction to Mike's talk, which is, um, which is more in depth, which is going to be looking at salivary glands and other neck lumps, so not lymph nodes and not thyroid. Um, so I'll give a little bit of clinical context to it in terms of what, when we see a patient in clinic, what we're thinking, um, usefulness of an ultrasound, and some of the common clinical, so, some of the common uh, lumps we see in the um, parotid and um, salivary glands and other neck lumps also. Thanks. So as ENT surgeons, when we see a patient in clinic, they will usually present with a lump or swelling in the salivary glands um, or other areas in the neck. Uh, so obviously our staple is history and clinical examination. Um, you can actually glean a lot of information from history and clinical examination. Uh, and a lot of the time it can point you towards what the diagnosis is. But, uh, you know, although history and examination is 80 or 90 percent of the diagnosis, we are we do need ultrasound for a number of reasons for diagnostic confirmation and for um, FNA. So if we move on to the next slide. So. As, as an ENT consultant who sees a patient in clinic, what is it we actually want? So confirmation of location, the characteristics of the lump, which Michael will talk about. Um, for salivary glands, if you take the parotid, for example, it can be quite difficult clinically to differentiate between a diffuse swelling of the gland or an actual um, discrete mass, um, particularly if there's some surrounding inflammation with a um, with a discrete mass, it can be difficult to know, but ultrasound is very good at that and telling us whether it's diffuse or discrete. Obviously, tumor being more likely to be um, a discrete swelling uh, or an inflammatory condition being diffuse. The other thing that can be difficult to differentiate clinically is whether a uh, lump is actually solid or cystic. Quite tense cystic nodules can end up being, uh, can, you can feel they're solid, but actually end up being cystic. So another useful thing there. Uh, and obviously to help guide FNA as well. So, you know, clinically you see somebody, you have an idea of the diagnosis, but ultrasound really is the, the most useful investigation then next for most of the salivary gland swellings. So in parotid, so, you know, these are the common things we'll see, patient presenting with a lump in the parotid. Um, the majority, at least two thirds, are gonna be pleomorphic adenomas. Um, which are benign, but are usually removed because of the risk of malignant transformation. Um, the, other, the other benign tumor that we see in the parotid is Warfin's tumor. Um, these are often bilateral, um, commoner in smokers, and um, again, clinically are gonna be very difficult to differentiate between that and um, any other type of tumor in the parotid. Uh, but these can be managed conservatively, usually. So if you've got ultrasound and FNA, which confirms warfins, you might be able, you can manage that conservatively often. Um, malignancy, so that might either be a primary parotid tumor, uh, which can be low grade or high grade, or uh, metastases to the, to the parotid from uh, skin or from another area. Uh, actually, just one, one thing back over there. Just something at the end. Uh, yeah, so the other thing, so in terms of diffuse swellings, um, you're really looking at siladenitis, uh, which could be acute infective, um, or chronic, uh, you can get stones. I mean, the stones are more common in the submandibular gland, which I'll come on to. Um, and you do get, if it's bilateral swelling, that can be a viral infection such as mumps. Uh, thanks, yeah. So the submandibular gland. So patient presents with swelling in the submandibular gland. Um, again, this can be a number of things. If it's diffuse swelling of the gland, uh, is it from obstructive calculus disease? If it is a stone, whereabouts is the stone? Because that will determine the management as well. Um, is it um, multi-stone disease within the gland itself? Um, is it within the hilum of the gland? Or is it in the actual duct? Um, so depending on the location of the stone, it will depend on the management in terms of whether the stone is amenable to excision or whether you need to consider removing the entire gland for treatment. Um, you do, I mean, obviously, you do get malignant tumors as well. Uh, uh, so there's actually a higher rate of malignancy in the submandibular gland compared to the parotid. So if it is a, if it is a solid lump, then um, it's more likely to be malignant than compared to the parotid gland. Thanks. 
Uh, yes, just thought I'd mention this as well, plunging ranula. You don't see it very often. Uh, usually you'll see small ranulas in the floor of mouth, um, which are really extravasation of um, uh, mucus and saliva from the sublingual gland. But sometimes they can go through the myelohyde and present as lumps in the neck. Um, again, this is useful to differentiate with that with an ultrasound. Thanks. Another condition that we sometimes see, uh, so patients presenting with um, discomfort, pain, maybe associated dry mouth, dry eyes, Sjogren syndrome. Um, so with, a, with an ultrasound um, and an FNA, uh, and with other investigations, that's usually enough to make a diagnosis. Thanks. So that's salivary glands, briefly. Looking now at um, other neck swellings that aren't lymph nodes, I think Susie touched on this as well, um, branchial cyst. So uh, often you see it as a um, acute swelling in patients, often younger adults, level two, level three. Can be mistaken for a lymph node, but they tend to be fluid filled. Um, they can have solid components to them as well. And here, the differential is between either a branchial cyst or um, a, me a metastasis from, say, for example, an oropharyngeal tumor. So, in older patients, you would uh, you'd consider working them up like an SCC, and usually we'll need PET scanning um, and uh, treatment along those lines. Thanks. Thyroglossal duct cyst. Um, I don't know if this was covered in the thyroid section, but uh, so these are embryo rem embryological remnants along the thyroglossal tract. Um, again, usually present in younger patients, but can <coughs> present in any age. Uh, you tend to see um, a lump that moves on swallowing and tongue protrusion. Um, and again, when you do an ultrasound scan, apart from looking at the lump, you want to ensure that they've got a normal thyroid as well. Um, Surgery is often offered, particularly if it's a uh, recurrent infection, but um, can be managed conservatively also. And now also just this is the final thing also, other lateral neck lumps that you might see, um, less common, but not lymph nodes, um, carotid body tumors, so these are paragangliomas. Um, they may, can easily be mistaken clinically for lymph nodes, but on ultrasound examination, you'll see mass that bifurcates uh, at the carotid bifurcation, which displays the internal and external carotid. Um, vagal paragangliomas, uh, again, not as common, but you'll be able to tell from the uh, way that the artery is displayed, if there's, there, there's usually not any splaying in a vagal paragangloma. We usually end up getting MRI scans with um, such patients also, because they do help to differentiate from with um, paragangliomas or schwannomas, um, and uh, with FNA with these, uh, obviously you need to be wary in terms of bleeding, uh, and so you can you can often make a diagnosis with ultrasound and MRI alone. That's that's mainly it really. So it's just really a brief overview as to the sorts of things you might see in salivary glands or other neck lesions that aren't lymph nodes. So I'll hand over to Mike now to go through things in a bit more detail from a radiology perspective. Thanks, Mike.